All right, how's everybody doing? Johnny's stretching it out, good. Prairie Ray Rock, Beach. Doing well. Vegas, treat you well? Not as good on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, as always, appreciate you guys' time. Proud of our team, man. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. Give him all the glory, man. I'm proud of our guys. We're going to continue to get better when we need to. That was a hard-fought game Friday night, and we knew going in that it was going to be a heavyweight battle. We think the world um, of Coach Odom and his team and what he's built there, and we knew we, we had to get ready to roll. Um, and it went back and forth in that game. I mean, there's multiple plays in the game. You know, it's 10 to 3. They got the ball in the red zone. I mean, potentially about to go up 17 to 3. We we're able to get a big time sack, get, miss the field goal. Like, there's just a lot of plays back and forth that you see in a game and, and showing our team just the resiliency of our guys. I mean, we're down the fourth quarter against a really good team on the road, crowds rocking and being able to respond the way we did and finish the game, being able to finish the first half the way we did with an interception, going forward on fourth down, our guys executed, and, I mean, finishing the game with an eight-minute drive on offense. That's the mentality of this team. That's the mentality of all three phases in our guys, and that's, that's how they work. I mean, no different today. Today is a Tuesday practice. We're outside working our tails off. Our guys are grinding. And we don't run from hard work. That doesn't mean that everything is going to be perfect. Obviously, we watch the film and it's not. we got a lot of things for us to continue to learn and grow in in all three phases. But I love this team. I'm so proud of them um, for what they've done to this point. We even talked about what's entitlement look like. Because entitlement can creep in when you're having success. Entitlement is thinking what has happened in the past has some correlation to the future. And it doesn't. Each week is a new week. Our team is a new team every week. we got to learn and grow in everything we do. But I'm proud of our guys, the fight that they had Friday night. And I'm excited for our guys to continue uh, to continue to learn and grow and improve. we got a big-time test coming here on the blue Friday night. They're undefeated in Mountain West Conference play. So are we. It's going to be a big matchup. And the last time the Aztecs were on the blue, they beat the Broncos on the blue. I was a part of that. And we can't let that happen. And they're going to have every right to come in here and beat us. And we got to earn the right to protect the blue on Friday night. And so Bronco Nation showed up in a major way down in Vegas. When I looked behind me and I saw the, the sea of blue and orange down in Vegas, it was, I mean, that just, it brings tears to my eyes, the support we have from this community, from um, our players' parents, what this means to them. And I know on the blue, Friday night, Bronco Nation, this place is going to be sold out. We need you there early. We're going to stripe the, the, stripe the stadium. We haven't done it in a while, so I know our guys will sh our fans will show up and be loud, and we need you. And we're all in this together. So excited where we're growing to. Got a lot of things to continue to improve on, and we will. You talked after the game Friday about the aggressiveness on fourth down, and you guys are one of the top ten teams now in the country on, on fourth down conversion. What's your general philosophy, really, when deciding on whether to go for it on those fourth downs? Yeah, going, try and go in every game, and every game is different. Every game is different on, okay, where are situations that we're going to go for? What are those parameters? If it's fourth and one, two, whatever, where is it out on the field? And that is my job as head coach, to go in with a plan. And obviously, just like anything, plans can change depending how a game is going, good or bad. And I've got to do a really good job evolving with it. Um, but the testament goes to our players and the plan put together from Coach Cutter and our staff. I mean, the easy part is on me. Hey, we're going for it. That's easy. The hard part is going out there and executing. Four for four on fourth down in that game, monster plays in the game. And as our players going out there and execute, I mean, one of the catches that uh, Matt Lauder had on, on the corner route on fourth and two, I mean, big time catch. He's getting draped all over by the defender, makes the catch. Uh, I mean, there's multiple plays in that game on fourth down that if you don't get those, we don't execute. Who knows how that game turns out? And so all the credit goes to our players and the plan put together by Coach Cutter and our O staff and having the confidence to be able to go out there and execute fourth down. Does that confidence increase as you Absolutely convert does. them? Yeah. Absolutely does. The more we ex and execution creates momentum. Execution creates momentum. There's times in that game where the momentum, we lost it because – UNLV executed. Our guys stood in the fight, kept swinging, had some execution, and we go on to, um, to get the momentum back. I mean, no different. We start the fourth quarter. We're down a score. First play, big-time explosive play to Cam Camper. Personal foul penalty, tack on another 15. Next play, execution to Matt Wagner. Big-time hit, lands, catches. I mean, execution creates momentum, and that's what we're able to do in the fourth quarter. I'm proud of our guys. Are you more of a gut feeling kind of guy on those fourth downs, or do you rely on an analytical mm -hmm. chart? I don't think I've Johnny, ever I'd say, you that. Yeah, Johnny, I'm, I'd say both. We definitely work with analytics, and I, it gives me a really good frame of reference. But I got to evolve through the game. There's a lot of gut situations. A lot of t I use the analytics as a frame of reference. 
Okay, what are the analytics saying here? And then what is going on in this game? Where's the momentum at? What was my plan going into the game in regards to these situations and when to go for it? So it's both, Johnny. It's using the book, the analytics, but also it's, it's a gut feel. Because at the end of the day, however it goes, good or bad, it's all on me. And I got to be good with those decisions. Spencer, when it, when it comes to that, like, I know you say, like, <clears throat> the guys are doing it in practice, but, like, there had to have been something that even preceded that, right? So, like, what, what, why was this so, so, you know, it's really become a part of your identity, executing on fourth down and things like that. So, like, what, what set that up before taking it to practice in that mentality? Yeah, I mean, f- even from January to now, Jay, I mean, looking at it, I know, you know, my, my personality, who I am, is, you know, I'm, I'm high energy, intense, passionate all the time, and I want to be on the attack. I want when a team plays us to feel like they are being attacked, not trying to survive. Like, I want all three phases. They, they're going to get our best, and that's no different for me as a head coach to our coordinators, to our coaches. And so even from January now, working through the plan, working through situational football in regards to end of half, end of game, Fourth down, when to go for it. You know, a lot of these special situations we work through a lot so that when you're in them, you're ready for these moments. And and a lot of it comes from there's a lot of times that I have not done a good job in these situations. So I've needed to learn and grow. And I'm I'm excited where we're growing too. But a lot of it, like I said, the easy part is me saying we're going for it here. The, the execution is on our offensive staff and our players executing it in these critical moments. And on the flip side, I mean, our defense had a huge fourth down stop in the game. So it goes both ways. And you look at college football, I mean, fourth downs are way higher than they've ever been. Yes, due to analytics. And guys use that as a frame of reference. Some guys stick to the book no matter what. I'm a blend. I'll look, I use the book as a frame of reference, and I, and I do a lot of um, – you know, going through it a lot throughout the week. But when I go in the game, it's this is where I feel. And I make sure the coordinators know, hey, guys, this is us. And I make sure our team knows, hey, fellas, if we get to this, you know what the call is. We're going for it. Like, end of story, you don't even need to look. So our guys know the confidence and the edge we're playing with so that they can stay in rhythm. I don't know if you'll tell us or whatnot, but can you give us one where you said that, you know, maybe the book didn't say it, but you're like, no, I'm confident in my team and I want to go for it? There's been probably a couple of different moments, maybe in that game as well, Jay, at a couple. Of, and there's been times where, the, where, you know, analytically it's, it's this is a go here and, and it's not for me. And I knew that going into the game. I knew that because of either how the game went or just going into the parameters I have. And so we punt the ball away. Um, so it just depends on each game is a new week and our team's a new team every week. And so I got to do a really good job throughout my prep to make sure as we go into a game that – you know, we're ready for those moments. But just like anything, I mean, if we, if we go in that game and we're two of four on fourth down, everybody's telling me I'm stupid. <laughs> that's the reality of college football. And I get it. And that's the razor's edge that I got to live on, knowing that when we make a decision to go for it, I got to be okay if it goes sideways too. And that's me evolving throughout, with our, throughout a game with our team, um, having the confidence for us to go out there and execute. Defense. I mean, you look you know, at times earlier in the season was getting criticized a little bit. At times, second, you know, big passing plays, whatever. But and then you give up ten points, hundred and thirty yards, first two drives. I mean, for them to block that in and, and you know only give up eleven points that fourth quarter stop, uh, the six sacks, nine tackles for loss. I mean, what, what can you say about the defense? Yeah, I'm proud of them. We're, we're continuing to get better, BJ, and we still got to eliminate explosive plays. I mean, in that game, there were seven explosive plays that UNLV had against us. That equaled two hundred and forty yards in seven plays. They had, what, 360 total offense, something around there? So you think in seven plays? So that's how when we talk about eliminating explosive plays. That one triple option play, that was one of the top rep plays in practice. We didn't execute in the game, went for 71 yards. So we've got to continue to do a good job as a defensive staff and our players taking what happens in practice to a game. But what I am very proud of, to your point, BJ, our guys responding. Our guys responding. It was not perfect, but our guys responded, stayed in it. A lot was thrown at them on Friday night, and they stayed in it, stood together. And that was a really talented offense we knew we were going, we were going against. I mean, one of the top scoring offenses in the country. Uh, and I'm proud of our guys, and I'm proud of how they showed up to work today. Looking at San Diego State, a couple of players stick, stick out as far as the, amongst the leaders in the NCAA. Cooper, the running back, what makes him special? What can he do? And then uh, Trey White, the defensive end with 11 and a half sacks. Yeah, I think first off, and I got to keep, keep reiterating, I mean, this is a really good football team we're playing. I mean, they got a new staff. Sean Lewis has done a great job. 
and we know they're going to continue to get better. He's an offensive, you know, offensive head coach. And even prior to the season now, I mean, we're looking at what he did at Kent State, what he did as the offensive coordinator at Colorado, what he's done this year, because they're continually to evolve as he gets the majority of his offense in. Um, and so we're going to make sure we're ready for all those scenarios. Um, but they're getting better each and every week. I mean, you can see the trajectory of this team. He's done a really good job of them. I um, mean, they got Washington State on the absolute ropes. I mean, that they're up big in the fourth quarter. Um, and so that's a testament to who they are as a team. And we know we're going to get their best. They're undefeated in Mountain West play. At this point, that's all we look at. They're undefeated. They're coming to the blue. And I do put a premium on the fact the last time we played the Aztecs, they beat us on the blue. That cannot happen. I mean, that we put an absolute premium on protecting the blue, protecting our home, and we got to make sure that doesn't happen. Now, in regards to who they are, I mean, they got weapons in all three phases, including special teams. Obviously, Trey White, when you lead the nation in sacks, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. I mean, he's a, he's a sophomore, I believe, from San Diego. I mean, he's explosive in the run game, in the pass game. We always got to know where he's at. And they really play well together defensively. I mean, they're one of the top scoring defenses um, in the country as well. I mean, you look at whoever they played, they've done a really good job in regards to scoring, uh, scoring defense. So we know they got DBs that can cover. They got a great front. They will create a lot of pressure on our quarterback. We got to be ready for that. On the flip side, offensively, I mean, Sean Lewis gives you a lot of different looks, and he wants to run plays as fast as he can. And you got to deal with all the space. You got to deal with RPOs, a bunch of different game plan run schemes. We're going to see they do a really good job looking at our um, what, what has hit us in the past, and we know we're going to see those plays on film. And their old line coach, Mike, I mean, he's one of the best old line coaches on the West Coast, know, known for a long time. And so we know they're very well coached. They're going to be ready to go. They had some guys that didn't play against Washington State. They will be playing against us, and so we're going to be attacked in a lot of ways. And their running backs, one of the better running backs in the country. I mean, he's 5'8", 200-some pounds. He's extremely low center of gravity, gravity, excuse me, very explosive runner. He's been a couple different stops, um, and he's good. I mean, we got to be ready to tackle one of the better running backs we'll see all year. You've only been a head coach for 11 games still. Just how much are you still learning every single game just about being a head coach? I'm learning, Greg, I'm learning every single minute. I promise you I'm probably learning something from this press conference right now, and it's going to be no different. I mean, I am a firm believer that to be the best version of yourself, it's all about learning and growing. And that's either me picking the brain of our staff, which we have a phenomenal staff, picking the brain of our players, calling people. Um, I do a lot of analyzing after a game in a game week of how's our operation, how is the messaging, where's the culture of our team, so I, I can learn and thrive because i got to be the best I can be for our team going into game eight, too. So it's a, I'm a constant work in, pro, uh, in progress, and I want to be that way forever. I want to be that way 20 years from now. I want to be finding, um, working my tail off to find little ways that I can continue to turn the temperature up in regards to me being a head coach because our, our players deserve that. Maybe a little deep, but, you know, before your first game as head coach, is there something that – you know now that you didn't know then or something that you've drastically changed? What's one of those big differences even between now and then? Yeah, I don't know if there's any, you know, big differences, but I believe like, you know, all, you know, little things do equal big things. And that's where from the first day I was a head coach to now, I'm looking at even the littlest things in our operation, how we can make it more efficient, how we can make it to where we can serve our players better, how we can grow them off the field better, and how we can create even better plans in all three phases. So. I am, I am hyper involved with anything that touches our players. And I, we have the best staff in the country across the board, but those are the things that I'm involved in, from nutrition to hydration to where anything that touches our players, I'm trying to find better ways to do it, and starting with me, um, because I want this place to be a place where young men can grow and thrive, to be better husbands, better fathers. But to do that, if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. So I'm always finding ways to turn that temperature up on our players to make sure they know you, you walk in this building, I want to have a smile on your face, but you better get your mind right because I'm going to be on you the second you walk in to make sure we crank them up higher. Spencer, with, uh, not to bring them up, but you know, last year, whether it be Memphis or Colorado State or some of these games where you guys did not finish well. Mm -hmm. You guys are finishing well this year, and, and I mean, for the most part, you guys have won every fourth quarter. It yep. seems like uh, there's an obvious answer, I guess, with yep. the man behind the podium. But like, what what is the difference? It's our players, Jay. I mean, I I, I if I get that credit, that's that's false. It's not. It has nothing to do with me. It's our players and how they work, and to finish these games the way they're finishing now. And I know I'm beating a dead horse, but it just goes back to how these guys train from January to now. 
to be able to finish everything they do, how they finish practice, how they finish meetings, because that's what we focus on. And they deserve the credit. I mean, there's no magic potion in regards to finishing these games or anything that I say that gets them to do it. It's they love each other and they put the work in. No different today of practice. And today's practice by no means was some perfect, easy practice. Our guys go out there and grind. And no different, we're, we put a premium on finishing practice the right way. The last scout team period or the last period we have, we need your absolute best because in the fourth quarter, that's where championship teams win games. Um, but they did, our players deserve all the credit. It's how they work. It's how they train. And we got to continue to find ways to grow that too. We got to find ways to make sure we're not down in the fourth quarter too, right? So always looking at ways. But JR, this is a great group of guys, man. I'm not going to sit up here and start crying. It's too early for that. But I mean, the, the respect I have for these kids and these coaches, the work they put in, the love they have for each other, the smiles they, they give each other, even when they're doing hard. You can do hard things and still have a lot of fun when you're doing it with people you love and care about. I mean, they deserve all the credit. We're going to continue to get better. Ashton, obviously, uh, had to do it a different way on Friday night. And your thoughts on his performance and any concerns about that left arm, left hand, left elbow, whatever the hell's going on there? Yeah, Mike, I mean, Ashton's an absolute warrior. I mean, there's times in that game where, I mean, he's, you know, everybody on that defense gets a shot at him. And he's an absolute warrior, never flinched. Even when he injured his arm in the game, he kept, he stayed in the fight, didn't, just, didn't miss one rep. And he's a guy that lives in the training room and was practicing today. And that's a testament to who he is. But I'm so proud of the young man, who he is as a player, who he is as a man of character, even off the field and how he leads. And there's even things in that film that he needs to continue to grow and get better because that's who he is. He's relentless. He's a guy that's a relentless competitor that wants to continue to improve. And there was even a play on Friday night where Ashton slipped. And you better believe I showed that clip to the team. And I'm like, Ash, are you kidding me? And our guys are looking around like, what? Coach is yelling at Ash, but it's like, that's how it is. And that's, and that's who he is. He wants to be pulled higher. And he's going to continue to grow and evolve. But if I were to encapsulate Ashton's performance on Friday, to me, he's a warrior. That's the quarterback. Yeah, what's, what's the quarterback play like for you, head coach, the way it's been operated? I'm proud of Maddox. I'm really proud of Maddox, Johnny. And I can say that without saying everything's perfect. It's not. I mean, Maddox is a redshirt freshman that's getting better week to week. And there's plays in that UNLV game that he missed. But there's a lot of plays that he made in that game that's a testament to his prep and who he is as a competitor. I mean, no sacks. Yes, our offensive line, tight ends, tailbacks protecting. But a lot of it's Maddox getting the ball up. He's got a really good time. He's got a good timer in his head to know what he's got and when he can get the ball out. No interceptions against a defense that leads the country in interceptions. So these are stats that won't usually directly correlate that people look to the quarterback play, but it is. And so I'm proud of Maddox. And I know the competitor he is. I know he's going to continue to look at the things that he struggled with on Friday night, but I'm proud of him. I got full trust in him. And I'm excited for him to continue to grow. Back to Trey White. I mean, you got your offensive line has had a lot of success protecting the quarterback. When you face a guy like him, uh, do you have to make much? I know you're not going to say much about you know yeah. specifics, but do you have to adjust from, or do you kind of just don't fix what's not broken? Yeah, we got to have a lot of answers for Trey White. I mean, when you lead the nation in sacks, we're crazy to not have answers and and switches for him. I mean, we need to, and so we'll be ready for him. Our our scout team's going to do a really good job as best they can, giving us the best look. And it's on us to schematically and what we do to make sure we're ready to play him because he's done a really good job. I don't know if you can say anything about it, but when Ash goes down, there was a moment there of, of serious concern. But he barely missed like any. He almost played every freaking offensive snap yeah. in that game. So I, I don't know if you could any stories of what went into that and checking with him and him just continues saying, "Nah, I'm good." He's a warrior, Jay. I mean, even after that play. I mean, he comes off, and we have protocols when someone comes off the, you know, comes out off the game with whatever injury it might be. And, and our head trainer, Garrett Holly, does a phenomenal job, checks him out, and, it's, and, and Ash is like, I need to get back in the game. I need to. And he did. And that's, he's a warrior, absolute warrior. How, uh, you guys are a little, I mean, going into the season, the way football is, he was like five deep at running back. I mean, it just seemed like you guys were so deep. <laughs> And change quick. It changes quick. And I mean, maybe stuff changes in the near future or whatever, but what, what does like a guy like Dylan Riley or somebody need to do to say, you know, maybe 33 can be 29 carries for Ashton or yeah. just something like that? Yeah, Tyler Crow's done a really good job too, and he's going to continue to have a part of our offense, and he deserves it. He's done a really good job on special teams too. And Dylan Riley is a true freshman. I mean, he's going to, the more he practices, the more he preps, the confidence we have in him continues to rise because we see him. He had a really good practice today. 
And so the more he does that, the more he builds the trust of his teammates. And we put an absolute premium on practice performance. He's been doing it in practice, needs to continue to grow, but he's going to get a shot. He's going to continue to get a shot. Hopefully we get Breezy back here this week. He was able to do a lot of practice today, so we're excited to get him back. And Sire Gaines is continue to work his tail off in the training room to get healthy too. So we're going to get those guys back at some point. We got who we got right now, and that's football. At any, at any position, if someone gets injured, carry the flag. No one's going to feel sorry for us. Carry the flag, next man up, let's go to work. And we're going to put the ball down on Friday night, and whoever we got to line up, we'll be ready to go. And that's no different with the running backs. And I'm proud of our guys performing in practice. But I think, I mean, Dylan Riley, our two freshmen, he's going to be stinking really good. And he's getting better every single week. Well, I mean, penalties hasn't been like a huge problem, but there were a couple Pardon? in the first half that really stalled some drives there. I mean, how, obviously you won, so you got by it, but is that one of those things, too, where you can go back and say yes. that? Yes. No, BJ, penalties for sure. I mean, there's two false start penalties, two holding penalties that absolutely get us behind the chains. And it's very hard to be efficient when you're playing behind the chains. And we were not great on first down against UNLV. So now you're, now you're playing second and 11, second and 12, and then you throw a penalty on top of that. Um, it, it hurts you. And, and one of them called back a touchdown. And so something we got to improve, it's something that we talked about yesterday as a team, is we got to make sure we fix, especially the procedural penalties, those are fixable. And then the fundamentals and techniques to where we don't have holding calls, it, it's a huge deal, huge deal for our offense to stay efficient, and we have penalties you can't. With, with Maddox obviously not taking sacks, you don't have a lot of negative plays. Yep. I mean, that, that, how much common sense when you're not having the penalties and you're getting positive yards, especially like you said on first down, I mean, how much is that the key to your offense? It's a key. It's, a, it's the key to everybody's offense, especially for us, BJ, because, I mean, we are going to run the football. We're going to establish a run game all the time. Like, that is what we work our tail off to do, and obviously every single defense we play, their number one goal is to stop the run. Like, End of story. And so we know that going in, that's going to be the battle. But if you have penalties, if you have tackles for loss, if you're not efficient on first down and you're playing second and long, it's really hard to do that. Because then if, you don't, if you're not efficient on second and long, now you're defending third and long, which happened also a lot in the game. It was our worst game all season in regards to third down on offense. And a lot of that's correlated because we're playing third and long instead of third and manageable, third and short, which is much higher execution rate. So things you've got to improve, and that's what we do after every single game. We won the game, proud of our guys. But in my team meetings and our position meetings yesterday, it was, what did we learn? One of those are the penalties. One of those is the, uh, the plays that we need to have to be efficient. One of them was the explosive plays on defense because this is the only way we're going to learn and grow. And championship teams can learn from their wins. They don't need to lose for it to be like, oh, I guess now what coach has been talking about matters. No, you got to learn from your wins. Got to learn from your wins. And you got to be as intentional when you win to grow the areas that you need to as a loss. The way that you guys pressure, I can't remember if it was after the first or second game of the year, but you said, you know, there's certain situations where you have inside leverage that's non-negotiable. I need you in inside leverage. With the way that you guys pressure, how much is all that stuff starting, I mean, how much has it been connecting for you in order to get home to the yeah. quarterback the way you guys do? We're improving, Jay. We are. We're improving from the back end and the front, the back end and the front end working together because, yes, there we've, we've given up explosive pass plays and we need to grow those. That is a direct correlation to fundamentals and techniques, leverages. But a lot of these sacks we're getting, there's nowhere to go with the football either. And I got to, I mean, Amari McCoy had his best game on Friday night. And he followed Ricky White around, and he played his best game. Still a lot on there, missed a couple tackles. Like, there's still a lot of things that Amaron needs to grow, but he played his best game. He's also been having his best practices as a Bronco the past month, too. And so, but with our, with our defense, I mean, it, it has to work together. It's not, all right, this is what the pressure is going to be, and then the back end figure it out or vice versa. Defense is all about 11 guys working together. If 10 are on the same page and one guy's doing his own thing, it's going to be explosive. And that happened against UNLV. There's some times where there's 10 guys doing exactly what we want. One guy's freelancing, explosive play. And that can't happen. Cannot happen. And so we've got to look at his coaches. And instead of just saying this to our team, we're evolving in practice. There's some different things we're doing in practice to turn the stress up on our guys defensively. So in those stressful moments, what they performed in practice will show up in the game. How do you feel like Jeremiah's been playing these last couple of games? He's improved. He's, he's played, he, I think he had probably, he had one of his best games on Friday night. I'd say one of his two best games on Friday night. Um, and he's a guy that same thing, just continually works. There were some plays throughout this season that he missed that we need him to make, either tackles or coverage. Um, and he made them on Friday night. 
and we need that from him. I think Devon Banks is playing at a much higher level. Like our corners are improving a lot. Coach Demo does a really good job with them, and we, we have enough, and now it's just continue to fine-tune some of those details because different than D-tackle and different than linebacker. If a corner or a safety screws up, the whole stadium knows, and that's just the razor's edge that they live on. That's playing DB. And they've grown a lot, and even today at practice, man, the urgency was high, and we're continuing to grow. What can you tell us about uh, maybe the interior of your offensive line, too? I mean, Jason finally gets a start. Mm -hmm. I think he lasted six plays or something yep. like that. Um, so you're, got, you're back to Holmes, uh, the right, your right guard, you're down to you know, third stringer there at times. Just kind of what was, what was going on. Yeah, what? I mean, it, we play a violent game. And especially in the fronts on both sides, O-line and D-line, we play an absolute violent game, and it's, it's next man up. I mean, it breaks your heart when guys get hurt or miss a little bit, but it's next man up. And our guys that jumped in that game worked their tails off and did some really good things, and we worked well together. We were able to establish a run game. wasn't perfect by any means. There's some things we need to clean up. We're able to protect Maddox. Um, and so I'm proud of those guys gelling together. I mean, when you've got the senior leader like a Ben Dooley out there, I mean... Ben Dooley's an absolute warrior. I mean, what he does at practice, what he does in the games, and not by any means that Ben Dooley's perfect, but man, how he leads, how he's just re you know relentless. Him and Cage on our left side, I mean, that's tough to deal with. And, and seeing our guys continue to grow and work together with a bunch of different guys rotating in, I'm um, proud of those guys, John. Coach Keen does a phenomenal job with our O-line, and it's next man up. We've got more than enough. And that's what I tell our coaches in every single situation. We got more than enough. Next man up, carry the flag. The standard is extremely high to play football for us. And whoever takes the field on Friday night will be ready. Jaden Virgin Morgan has had multiple sacks in mm -hmm. three of the last four games for you guys now. And you talk about getting better every week. How much of an example of that is he? Jaden Virgin Morgan is playing his absolute best football these past two weeks. End of story. And I cannot be more proud of him. It's because he does it in practice. I mean, if you just if you just take time to watch the entire game and watch Jaden, I mean, he's playing relentless. Hawaii and UNLV. Now it's our job as coaches to continually turn the heat up and make sure he doesn't get complacent. Which today at practice he worked his tail off. So, but I got to give Jaden a shout. I mean, he's playing absolute relentless these past two games. I mean, that double throwback in the game. If Jaden doesn't retrace on the quarterback and tip it, it is a walk-in touchdown. I mean, he could have bear crawled to the end zone as a touchdown. And Jaden, super savvy football player, saw the quarterback roll out late. He smelled a rat. He put his foot in the ground and was able to get a, get a tip of the ball and turn out to be incomplete. But Jaden Virgin Morgan's playing at a very high level. Have you noticed opposing defenses kind of focusing more on him, whereas opposed to the beginning of the season, they might focus more on Ahmed? Yeah. Well, now you got to kind of pick your poison because Ahmed's playing at a high level too. So... You can see, I mean, we're putting guys in conflict. Then our D tackles are doing some good things, and Coach Chins will blitz people from everywhere. I mean, corners, safeties, they're coming from everywhere. And so it's, it's both sides. I mean, Jaden and Ahmed, I'm very proud of how they played. But now we still have to continue to grow on how we finish on the quarterback. We had six sacks. Fellas, we probably missed seven in the game. So we have to improve that. We're going to continue to see mobile quarterbacks. We'll see two real mobile quarterbacks against San Diego State. Yeah, maybe the most important question. Uh, what's the plan for Halloween? It's the day before the game. So what, what, what's the plan? Are you going to get your coaches out of here for a couple hours, or how's that, how's that going to work? Yeah, we've we got, we, we got to figure it out. We, we'll work through it. We'll have our normal pregame stuff with our players. And when our players go to the hotel, our coach will have time to go trick-or-treat with their families, and you need that. You can't miss those moments. And we got, you know, a bunch of our staff have young kids, so trick-or-treating is going to be full force. I know my daughter's little Rosie is going to be a tiger, and Ellie's going to be a rainbow unicorn. And so I don't know what I'm going to be. I'll, I'll probably show up Thursday night and Rachel will say, wear this. I'll be like, are you sure about this? But uh, you can't miss those moments, man. I mean, we got to be husbands and fathers, and that's also how we lead to show our players what it looks like, too. But we can't miss those moments. And we'll find a way to get some time with them Thursday night before the end. Best Halloween outfit when you were a kid. Oof. Man. It had to be somewhere on the lines of like a Peter Pan or a I probably was some sort of cowboy with some guns. You know, I I can't think of one that I've I know this is a couple years ago, maybe 2019, and our daughter our Rosie wasn't born yet. It was Ellie. Or sorry, probably 2021. And Rachel, we were the 
we were essentially the donut people. So Rachel wore a big donut, our little Ellie wore a big donut, and my, my wife brought me a Krispy Kreme hat and I wore a donut as I'm walking around the neighborhood. It was, it was embarrassing for me, but I was smiling and laughing and that's what it was. And I'll probably might wear the donut costume again. We'll find out. Anything else? <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, I will. Oh, you, Johnny. Um, I know how close you are with Scott Matlock and how exciting it must be. I mean, he had a sack and a reception in an NFL game, and he's one of the most popular players on the team, and he's just like this folk hero. Like, how cool is that for you? Oh, man, I, I adore Scotty. I love him dearly. I mean, he's family to me forever. And seeing what he's doing now in the NFL, I mean, that's who he was at Boise State. And so when he went to the NFL and when I talked to the scouts, you know, Charger scouts or guys that are around him, like, man, Scotty's killing is everything we want. I'm like, that's who he is. That's who he is. That's how he works. That's how he is as a teammate. That's how his habits are. And so seeing him do it on the biggest stage in the NFL, it's a testament to his work and who he is. But I love Scotty. I mean, he, the best is yet to come for him. And I think the absolute world of him. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.